Hey guys, it's Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art. Today we're doing the April Flowering Rain Boots stamp class. And this is putting together the packets that you'd get in the mail for the stamp class. I'll be putting those together for um, your viewing today. If you'd like to get a packet, you can go ahead and order those for $30. That includes the shipping to your house. Or you can place a $35 order and get this packet mailed to you for free. So if you and if you're local, um, there's a, is a little bit of a discount if you want to do a package pickup at the door. But um, this is what we're making today. We've got the rain or shine. I'm here for you. Our friendship is naturally beautiful. Live life in full bloom, and every storm that comes also ends. This is using the beautiful flowering rain boots stamp set, along with the coordinating dies. Whoops, I lost one. I won't pull, put those up top so that I get nine dies there. Beautiful. And we are also actually using the scalloped contour dies. However, I did pre-cut all of these for your packets, but I do love these great border or um, frame dies. And we'll be using the Let's see, this is called Flowering Fields DSP. So pretty. And a few ink colors. Oh, we're also using this beautiful brushed brass butterflies. These are adhesive backed, so they're really easy to stick on your project. And you'll get eight of those, two for each of the cards. And we'll be using these beautiful colors. We've got Poppy Parade. So Saffron, Pear Pizzazz, Pool Party, Rich Razzleberry, Fresh Freesia or Highland Heather, either one will work, and Gray Granite. So no black in this class, which is weird. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go down to the desktop here and I'll get started. All right, so we've got our cards here and I'll show you what your packets will look like. And we'll go through one at a time. And really the only die cutting that we'll need to do is with the flower here and the watering can. So if you don't own the dies for the Flowering Rain Boots stamp set, you can just fussy cut those two images and you'll be fine because everything else is on a panel. So we'll put those to the side for now. This is what your package will look like. All of your cards will come pre-cut um, and pre-embossed. You'll have your dies ready, you'll have your twine, your butterflies will all be in this bag right here. And they will be bubble wrapped in a mailer, a bubble mailer and backed with cardboard. <laughs> because I want it to arrive to you safely. So let's go ahead and pull this first one out. This one, you will need the stamp Rain or Shine, I'm here for you. Look at that ready here. You'll need the flowers and the watering can. And you'll need gray granite, so saffron, and poppy parade. I believe that's it. Let's just take a peek on the inside here. Yes, okay. So three colors on this one. So we'll put these stamps off to the side here and open up our bag. So we've got an envelope here. We've got our butterflies. Don't forget these. These will go on all the cards. They're just all in this first bag here. And we'll put our finished card back in here when we're done to keep it nice and clean. So we'll take our card base and just fold that. I can take my bone folder out and just burnish that. If you order the packet, you will also get the PDF mailed, emailed to you with all of the measurements. So I won't be going over the measurements today, but you can get some inspiration just by viewing this, I hope too. So here is our inside panel. That's the bigger one like this that will go on the inside. And this one right here will actually be layered straight on there with the poppy. There's one hiding in there and the DSP. So these will all be 
layered together and we're going to have an even border on the top and the left and the right so it'll be a little bit thicker at the bottom this was a special way to cut this paper so i got a lot of these because um it was an even amount there so i'm going to take my glue and just glue all these together right away i like to be strategic with my paper cutting and get the most out of my card cuts now this paper and this flowering rain boots bundle are only available till the end of June. So if you find these beautiful, make sure you get those before they go on their own retiring list here, probably next week. So once that retiring list hits, people start snatching things up, especially popular items. So I won't guarantee that till the end of June for sure. All right, I'm gonna put this right on the card. Again, having your even border on the top three sides there. That's pretty all by itself, isn't it? This paper is so pretty. All right, let's put that to the side for a second. I'm gonna take my little strip right here and do the sentiment in poppy, or really any color that would go. You can always check your DSP to see all of the colors in there. So here's our rain or shine, I'm here for you. Looks good. Close that one up. Let's go ahead and do our other stamping. We've got these two little pieces too. These are for our stamping. We will do the flowers in So Saffron. You guys, I think I might have a non-busy weekend this weekend, which is kind of nice. Let me know your weekend plans. Hopefully you have something fun planned. I'm super excited to not be doing much. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this sideways so we can fit the watering can in there. So this is the only one, again, that we're gonna be die cutting, but you can always fussy cut it too. I like the dies because they cut out the handle on the watering can. And I like how that looks. If you are getting your ink prints too um, saturated, your ink pad might be too juicy. They do send them a, a new ink pads are very juicy. So just take a plastic spoon and press the back of it into your ink pad and then wipe it off with a tissue. You can reuse the spoon 18,000 times and then your ink pad will just have the ink pushed back into it. You don't lose any ink and it'll just be a little bit less at the surface to get a nice print. That's a good tip for you. Okay, so we've got these right here. I'm going to take my scissors and just angle cut these words. So you can see the shine is a little bit to the left of the U. We're just going to follow that, that line there and just give that a snip. And this is done. Oh, my dog is asking to go outside. That is perfect timing, Guster. Hmm. You did the funniest thing this morning. He was um, he, run, he likes to eat his food in a funny way. So I posted that on Facebook. Maybe I'll put that on my business page. Let me go ahead and put this through. I should have let him out before I started my video. I will probably come to regret that. All right, and then we need the watering can, and that's it. I'm gonna do, I've got some washi tape here. You can get washi tape at any little craft store or anywhere, you probably have some in your stash if you're like me. It comes in handy for making sure the dies don't move when you run them through your die cutting machine. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my mini stamp and cut emboss machine. I think I can do these at the same time. I'll run these through and then I'm, I actually will let the dog out because I really don't want any accidents in here. So you'll have to excuse me for just a minute. 
and then when I do the YouTube upload, I hopefully I'll be able to cut that part out. So sorry about that. He is ringing the bell. Oops. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, beautiful. Okay, I'm so sorry. I will be right back, but I'm not going to stop the feed. So just a moment. So now we've got our watering can here and our card base and our words so we will be putting this on flat get my liquid glue out you can use your stamp and seal or however you'd like to attach this piece and i'll put it flush to the white part here and then we'll put these up on dimensionals All right, so we've got a few here. Actually, I think I'll use a little one on the tip of that. Give it some support. And then two on here as well. You can hear my rooster crowing in the background. One of our four roosters. We have a ridiculous amount of roosters. <laughs> we hatched our own last spring. So we hatched, uh, I think, five, nine birds. I think four of them were roosters. So we have 16, I think, right now. All right, we'll take these butterflies. I'm gonna use one big one and one small one on every card. You can see there's four big ones down here and four little ones down here. So let's peel this off. I'm gonna put a big one on the flowers right there, give it a press. And then this little one can go over here by the words. I kind of angled those a little bit. So there is the front of the card. The front is all done. We just have to do the inside now. And our envelope. So let me just pull open my cheat sheet here. Where did our centerpiece go? I didn't put it in there. I haven't thrown it on the floor. <laughs> Oh, I think I put it over here. Okay, so here's our inside piece. This one will say, our friendship is naturally beautiful. And that is the same stamp set. I think all of the stamps will come in just this one stamp set. So we're gonna do that in Poppy Parade as well, right in the middle. So I've got it centered and kind of have an even border around the top and the sides. And then we'll get our So Saffron flowers back out and just decorate the sides here. So I'm just going to do this lower corner right here and the upper right hand corner. Kind of have those pointing back in here. Make sure you have a paper behind there so you can do that center piece and we'll glue that in but first we'll go ahead and do the envelope too. I like to decorate the bottom left hand corner of my envelope. So I'm going to take my little flower pot here in gray granite and you know what I did was a mask so I will go ahead and do the flowers and I forgot to prepare this part, so I apologize. But this um, will have flowers here. And then, whoops, I'm going to take a sticky note. So any sticky note will do. And we're gonna 
stamp the flowers one more time on our sticky note to create a mask. And this will just be cut. Okay, I stamped on the sticky side here, and that's what you want. If you have full sheet sticky notes, that's even better. You know, did you know that they sell those? That's really nice. I think the roosters are celebrating that it's getting a little bit warmer today than it was yesterday. I think today's high is going to be 55. Yesterday's high was 45. But, you know, last Sunday was... I think it got to be 80, so Michigan is weird. <laughs> Springtime, you never know if it's going to be 20 or 80. And it really could be the same in the same week. And most likely will be. This morning when the kids got on the bus, it was 28 degrees. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So along these flowers, you only have to cut the bottom side that's going to be touching the pot so don't cut around the whole thing you don't need to and in fact it'll give you a good handle to hold on to if you don't cut it all so we're just doing that bit down there and I kind of did it a little bit more detailed so I would be able to see the pot really well so I'm going to line that up here and we will stamp our pot right on the top of that sticky note Masking is a good tip, a good technique. It's easy and accessible for lots of people because most everybody has a sticky note lying around, right? So you see that would look funny if we stamped it on the paper like that. But once we take this note off, it's just perfect. Cool, huh? All right, so that is our envelope. We're going to glue this inside piece in and we are done with our first card. Stay tuned for the last card. It's a fun fold. So that'll be fun. All right, and there's our first card. One down. <laughs> All right, so the next one is our friendship is naturally beautiful. And I liked how this background piece makes it look like you have stitching or like a ribbon through all of this but it's really just behind there it's a trick of the eyes so i'll go ahead and grab my next packet here i had this taped down i'm going to tape my paper back down again so it stops moving on me all right that's better all right so let's go ahead and take everything out hopefully my fingers aren't inky got our envelope Got our twine. This piece will actually be going on the envelope flap as a nice little decoration for the flap there. And here's our card base and our other layers. So let's go ahead and fold our card base. That's what I like to start with. This is the thick basic white. When I first started card making, I was making card bases with regular white which I thought was fine until I started getting um, cards from other people and going oh you know what this is so much more substantial as a card it just feels nicer being thicker and you know it's pennies more if you really calculate it out so it really is worth getting the thick I use the the regular thickness for the white for all the other you know layers you don't need thick for that but you really want the thick for the card base. It's worth it, let me tell you. <laughs> so I'm going to glue down this Poppy Parade layer right in the middle. So try to get the, oops, it's crooked. See, that's why I like this liquid glue. It gives me a minute to fix it. This has some very special dimensions so that it just fits on the inside of those lacy bits, which is really cool, right? So I'll go ahead and glue this down. It 
just so that it peeks out evenly around all the sides. And now the dog would like to come back in, but I hopefully he can manage being out there. Unless he keeps barking. <laughs> I may have to let him in. Oh, the joys of owning a dog. All right, so we'll go ahead and decorate the envelope flap now. I will show you how to do that. The um, You could do liquid glue if your paper is not too thin. I don't think this one is. Or you could do a tape runner or something. Um, but you're going to put and glue along the flap of the envelope only. You don't want to put it on this piece because then you might have some overlap and you're going to get glue all over your scissors. So I would really put it on the envelope flap. In fact, I think I might grab my tape runner because that will be better. I'm going to use Stampin' Steel. So just along the edge here, and I went over the edge a little bit, so I'm just going to roll that down. I think you used liquid glue on the sample piece, but just to show you, you can use any adhesive that you'd like. So I've got the envelope flap all stickied up. And while it's closed, while the envelope flap is closed here, this is how you're going to want to put this on because you want your, your picture to be right set up. If you did it like this and did it, it would be upside down when you closed it. Hopefully that makes sense. So when you have it closed like this, you're just going to um, keep your page on the, on the desktop here and maybe just fold it up to so that the edge is nice and crisp. Now we're just going to press it. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> so now we've got a good flat side there. Now we don't want our flap to be square like this or rectangular so we're just going to open it up and you can see along here just to snip along the edges. Do your best to follow along the edges and not cut into your envelope. And then it should look pretty smooth on the other side. There we go. There's our really beautiful envelope. Nice and simple. But really a wow. All right, so we've got that. We've got our card base here. And now we just have to do some stamping on this white layer that will go right on there. So before we glue that, we'll go ahead and stamp it. Now I will do the boots in Pool Party to get all my colors back out. And we're going to be using Pear Pizzazz and Poppy. So three colors on this one, these three. make some room here. All right, let's start with the boots. Now this can get a little snug, so I do want you to be uh, a little bit careful where you put the boots. So it's going to be pretty close to the bottom of this white panel because we need to have room for all the flowers to fit into the boots. So let's make sure to put it pretty close to the bottom there. So let's go ahead and stamp those boots. Right in the center-ish there. That looks pretty good. Close that one. We'll get out our pear pizzazz. And I'll put that on a block here for the stems. Now this is going to be a little tricky. I want you to over stamp. This is actually going to be in the boots, but you can see both images. We didn't mask here because I, I just didn't, but you can, you could, but I, I don't think it was necessary. 
but I do want these to sit in the boots, not hovering over the boots. So I'm gonna have to put my head here, make sure. So this is going down to the second line on the, the rim of the boot. Hopefully that makes sense. There, so those look like they're in the boots now. And I think I've left myself enough room to do these flowers in the poppy. These are the tulips. They all come on one stamp. I found when you die cut these, you can actually cut them apart where they're kind of separated naturally in these two boots and have a set of flowers here and over here, which is really fun when you're doing the die cuts. We didn't do any die cutting of this one this time. All right, I want those to connect, so. Ooh, that looks nice. Mm. I love when you can just stamp a thing and it's all colorful with colored ink. I do love coloring. I love coloring with my blends, but there's something satisfying about just stamp, 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 and you've got a fully colored image already. Oh, and there's one more thing. We're going to be stamping the sentiment in the poppy as well right over here so we want our friendship is naturally beautiful and we'll just put that right on top of this boot i think that looks nice i was debating whether to do a tag or something there and it was covering up too much of that fun image and this really does pop you can definitely read it so i thought that will work So we'll go ahead and glue that one on. What flowers are your favorite when spring is coming and you get excited about things coming out? What do you get excited to see in the springtime? Let me know in the comments what your favorite flowers are. Or if somebody were to give you flowers, what would you hope it would be? All right, I'm going to double up this twine that I have in the bag there. So we're going to have the two ends there and then just make it into two because we're going to use and now pretend it's one and <laughs> tie a bow. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and give that a turn it into a bow by pretending those two strands are one. So we get a double bow. And then this side, we're just going to snip that one loop so that those are the tails. Isn't that cute? So we'll go ahead and put that off to this side, this little boot here. And you'll just need one little glue dot there. Hmm, I forgot to get the glue dots. One second. Well. I don't know where my glue dots went, but that's what you're all going to do is put this on with a glue dot right there. Just like that. I was cleaning in here earlier. I don't know where they went. <laughs> oh, well. So that's that card uh, front is almost done. We do need our butterflies on there. So again, one big one, one small one. I'm going to put a big one right here. And a small one right here. They're hovering around this beautiful flowers and these boots. And there's your front. And now we'll do the inside. So I'll put my bow to the side for a second. On the inside, we're going to stamp Live Life in Full Bloom in Poppy Parade ink. Right in the middle there, upwards of center. And then we're gonna take our stems again in the pear pizzazz. And kind of come in from the corner. Oh, I got a dimensional back in. Those end up everywhere, don't they? So I'm gonna po point this in from the corner, but I don't want the bottom of the flowers to, to show on my corner. 
So I'm going to just try to get it in there as much as possible without having the corner be white. Hopefully that makes sense. If the corner does have some white in it, you can ink this up again and just kind of stamp some more stems in the corner. It's actually what I did on this one, so it's not too noticeable. Now we'll just go ahead and add our, our tulip heads to our flowers on the inside here. And then this card is done. Oops, I should have inked that up a little bit better, but it still looks cool. There's our inside there and how that's supposed to look. <laughs> oh, I should find my glue dots. I need those. All right, so that's card number two in our decorated envelope. We'll put that to the side and move on to the next one. We've got Live Life in Full Bloom. This one has blues and purples, blues, greens, greens and purples. <laughs> So we'll get that set out here. Next package has the twine in there. Again, of course, I'm going to need a glue dot for that, and I'll just find those later. You guys know how to use glue dots, right? So we've got our envelope here, which we will decorate. Our little pieces and our card base. Look, go ahead and fold the card base. Use my bone folder here. This one we've got a scalloped green rectangle that is evening evergreen. We've got some rectangles here, and then this DSP will go on those, and this little piece will be stamped on and then added to the center. So, first of all, let's add the DSP to the little backing pieces. We've got two of these. Oops. Does anybody like tulips? I get excited when I see the daffodils popping up. They seem to come out first. And the forsythia bushes. And I'm driving down the road wow, wow. and I shout out, forsythia! in the springtime because I'm so excited to see it blooming. It's the yellow, the yellow bushes that you see everywhere in the spring, depending on where you live, maybe. Do you have forsythia by you? We're in mid-Michigan. I remember we had some growing up in Ohio, southern Ohio in Cincinnati, too. So I'm not sure where that, that might not grow. I, I would think it would grow everywhere, but I don't know. It's not the most beautiful, but it is exciting because it means that spring is here. And that's why I like it. All right, so here's our inside piece. And then this will go on the outside. So before we glue this down, this will actually go on dimensional. So don't glue it down yet. And let's go ahead and stamp on our front panel and our inside panel. So for this card, we're just going to be using the two purples. We've got Fresh Freesia and Rich Raspberry. And again, you could also use Highland Heather if you don't have the Fresh Freesia. This is one of the newer in colors from last year, um, but it is a pretty purple. So both of those are actually in here. So the background here is Fresh Freesia. The light tulips here are Highland Heather. And then these darker ones are the Rich Raspberry. So you could go uh, any direction there. So let's go ahead and open up the light one. And actually, I will have to wash my tulips because we just had them in Poppy Parade. So I'm going to take out my Stampin' Scrub here and give it a spritz with the Stampin' Mist. This will just give it some cleaning power. I'm going to use the wet side to scrub it and then we just dry it off on the dry side. I love this thing. You can use the chamois too, but I really love using the Stampin' Scrub. 
if you don't wash it often enough, like I don't, you'll want to stamp it on some scrap paper just to make sure that it doesn't have any residual ink being picked up from the scrub. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp these tulips in the corner of our little piece here. I want to leave some white in the corner because we're going to fill that in with the darker colors. You see what kind of where I'm going here. So right like this and then turn it over and the same thing. And you see, I should have pushed in my pad with a, with a spoon. It is a little bit juicy and this is what will happen. Your ink will start bleeding and you, instead of those nice little dots that you would get like this, I might've actually used the other color. And, um, the, it, this one's a little bit too juicy. Can you tell the difference? So I did use the other ink. Hmm, that's funny. I was trying to figure out which one it was. I was wrong, and that's okay. So you can also use your bone folder to press in the ink also if if you need to. So as since we still have this out, I'm going to get my, my envelope and the center. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're, we're starting with the light one so we don't have to wash it for the dark one. So here's our inside piece. Same thing. I should have... I don't know where my spoon is. That's okay. There's one. And then same thing in the left. Let's see, make sure this is top. We got the flap there. Left bottom corner right there. Good. Now we'll take out rich raspberry, and I shouldn't have to wash my stamp right now. We'll just ink it up and fill in. You see that one tulip that's kind of bumping out a little bit further than the other ones? I'm going to tuck it into this space right here. So like this. So you're almost only using these left three tulips here to kind of fill this in, but it'll give you a little different tulips. So they don't all just look like it. you stamped it twice right in a row. It'll kind of give it a little bit more interest. There we go, and this one. Okay, and one more thing, we will stamp, well, two more things. We're gonna say live life in full bloom on this one. I think we did that in red already. Yes, we did. So I'll get my scrub out again. We're reusing some sentiments because there's four sentiments in here and we wanna do the inside and the outside of the cards. So yes, we will be reusing some of these. They're actually all different on the outside. All right, live life in full bloom in the rich razzleberry and the lower right hand, just tuck it right in those flowers. And then we have a little bit of white space there. Perfect. And then on this one, we are going to do our friendship is naturally beautiful as the center sentiment. pretty. Okay, push those off to the side and start gluing some things. So look at this. We're almost done. We've got our envelope, we've got our pieces. Let's go ahead and glue this layer to our evening evergreen. And that will we'll add with dimensionals. Let's go ahead and add the center because that just goes flat. And then we'll get out our dimensionals. So I like to do one in each corner plus one in the middle so it doesn't kind of dip. 
and I don't put it over the stitching edges just in case now oh, it's probably fine but just in case it shows through or it actually gives it a little bit more support if you're not too close to the edge also I would think plus you just do what you want so that's what I wanted to do <laughs> All right, so this just gets centered right in, left and right, up and down on that card. And then we'll take our twine. And if I had a glue dot, I would add this right now, but I'll just go ahead and add it later. Just tie my bow, straighten it out, fuss with it a little bit. Who's good at tying bows? <laughs> I never get it right the first time, but. If you fuss with it a little bit, you can get it how you want it, right? Trim off the tails if they're too long, which I think they need to be trimmed just a hair. I'll put them together so they're even. And then that will go right in that lower left corner. So there is our third card all done. Oops, nope, it's not. We need to add the butterflies. Wait a second. Pause. Rewind. Let's put a big butterfly. We need to fill this little white space. Big butterfly, little butterfly. I like to angle those a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's pretty. All right, so we are on to our last card. This is the fun fold. And it's got a flap like this and these little gates that open up and you can set it up on your desktop either with this part sitting on here, which it kind of hovers a little bit, or you could set those underneath the center part and it's a little bit more sturdy. Hopefully you can see that. So kind of like, kind of like that. So then a fun fold. I'm not sure what this is called either. It's just a cool one. We'll have to help help me come up with a name for that. <laughs> I didn't come up with it. I saw somebody else do something similar, but I came up with my own measurements. So, all right, let's go ahead and put this one together. Get out your last packet. I think I've got at least six of these uh, left if you'd like to order, but they are only available through the end of April and it's already the 28th. So <laughs> you have three, two and a half days <laughs> to order these packets if you'd like one. So we've got an envelope here and all of the pieces. This one comes with a lot of pieces. So let's go ahead and fold our base. And that will go like this with the short side on the top. Oops, dropping stuff. And then this piece right here should come to the center there like that. That will just be glued right on the top here. It should actually fit just perfectly right there at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and glue that back part down. If I butt it up against this other piece, that should help it fit just perfectly. And give that a second to dry. And when we put the center piece in, this white panel, that will cover up our seam so you won't see that. Cool, huh? So we'll be printing or stamping on that in a second. Let's see. Okay, we can do these green pieces. You've got two old olive pieces and two pear pizzazz embossed pieces. I think those were embossed with... Well, I'm not sure. The, I thought I had the name on there. It was this one. It's supposed to be painting, like a paint swatch, but I like to use it as cake icing or uh, like a snow scene. It's a really cool folder. All right, so let's go ahead and just glue the embossed pieces down to 
the old olive pieces. A lot of layering on this one. All right, and those two will actually go on these little flaps here. So we can just glue those flat down. You'll have a small border on all of these. And on this top panel, we are going to do this poppy parade and then the DSP on top of that. I like to do around the edge and then a swirl in the middle. Probably don't need the swirl in the middle, but I don't know. It feels like the middle needs some security too. Just a little bit. <laughs> don't want to use too much liquid glue I've had some classes where you know as a kid you get heavy handed with the glue but you only need a thin little strip there okay so for this piece we have a calypso coral which is what the base is poppy parade and then a white panel that we're going to be stamping on. So let's go ahead and glue these two together for now. These are just little rectangles. And you don't want to put glue all over the back of this one because it's actually going to overhang. And we're going to add that with dimensionals. So hang on with that one. So we're going to stamp on here, we're going to stamp on this little strip right here, and we're going to stamp on the inside portion and the envelope. All right, so let me take a peek. So on the inside piece, we are going to stamp rain or shine, I am here for you. It's a nice sentiment. In Poppy Parade. On this card, we're just using Poppy and Pear Possess. So just upper quadrant there. And that's it for the center, actually. On the envelope and this little panel, we'll be doing the tulips with the stems. So let's go ahead and get our, our pear pizzazz out. Actually, before I do the stems, no, I will do this first. Okay, for the stems, you want this right side, since it's up higher, to be past the bottom on the panel. So make sure that that's not floating in your panel. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's off the card there just slightly like that oh and we gotta wash our tulips because we used purple last didn't we should have done this one first before the purple oh well it's fine i'll just scrub it again All right, that looks good. My grid paper is getting nice and messy. Did you know you can buy a whole stack of grid paper? I really like it because it's got all these measurements. I like the center zero and you can exactly center things because there's measurements out from zero on both sides of this. All right, sorry my dog's really wanting to come in now, but we're almost done. All right, I'm gonna put these tulips on. There's the one for the front, and now we want to do the envelope. 
And again, make sure that the bottom of that side is off the card or the envelope just a smidge. I'll give you the most stems. And then we'll go ahead and top those tulips too. Our envelope is done. Our center is done. This part is done. And now we just need our sentiment. And then we're done stamping. So this is a nice long sentiment. It's long and skinny, but we're going to be cutting it up so it looks cool on our card. So you can do that with any sentiment that you have. Actually, since it's so long and it's photopolymer, I don't want it to be um, wavy. So I'm going to stick it on my grid paper, another good use for your grid paper, and line it up on one of these lines and just pick it up from there. So now I know that it's straight. So I'll get my pear pizzazz ink back out and we'll just stamp it right on this thin strip. Again, I'm going to line this little paper up with this grid lines too so that I know that everything is straight. Okay. Perfect. Oops. So you can see that I've got all my words on there. It's pretty straight, but I will be cutting these up. So I'll cut kind of close to the ends here. And then I'm going to cut every two words. So every storm will say together. That comes and also ends. So make sure you get the right words saved here and you're tossing the right <laughs> scraps. All right, so now we've got all our pieces. We are ready to glue. So we'll bring our card base back in here. And actually, I'm going to get rid of this bottom piece because it's really messy right now. It's just ugly. All right. There. All right. So let's go ahead and glue our inside piece in. Rain or shine, I'm here for you. In fact, I'm just going to stamp and seal that one in. Just a little bit in each corner, a dab in the middle. That's a fun way to do it too. So then we can close it up and glue this piece on here. Oh, let's use stamp and seal again. So we got that panel. Now we're going to add dimensionals. Make sure you're going on the top corners. And then maybe about halfway down. Not any further than that. And one in the middle. One in the middle for good measure. Take your backings off. We're almost done. All right, so when you put this on, just make sure that you don't have any sticky parts overhanging your flap here. But it should just kind of be centered like so. And I'll take a peek. Yep, looks good. Give that a press. And then we've got our little words here. And we will just put those flat. I'm going to add those with the glue. Every storm... And you can kind of play around with the placement on this if you wanted to do it differently. You could cut apart all of your words. It's up to you. But if you get too much glue on there, just kind of smoosh it out with your tip. But I'm going to put that one in the top left there. That dog is ready to come in. I am almost done, buddy. Every storm that comes, I feel like that's kind of together. And that's why I put this one a little bit separate from those also ends. You could put that down here or even on the inside if you wanted or down on this little green flap. Oh, 
but I'm just going to put it right there. And we have to add our brass butterflies one more time. The big one goes there. Or really wherever you want, right? And there. So there is our four cards all finished. And that one will just open. I like to sit it on the centerpiece there. Very cool. Thank you so much for joining me for this class. If you'd like to purchase a packet, you can um, earn it for free by clicking the link there to order. If you need help ordering, I'm happy to help you with, um, you can email me at debjoysmeek at delightofmyart.com. And um, make sure you check out some of the retiring last chance list also before that stuff is gone. It, um, we get a brand new catalog starting Tuesday. So there's stuff that will be gone next Monday and it's Friday or it's not Friday today. I'm usually um, doing this on Friday, but it's Thursday today. I'm busy tomorrow. So I popped on today with your class here. Oh, let's go ahead and just put me back in the camera just to say goodbye. Let's see. There I am. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a good weekend. And let me know if you need any help with anything. Have a great day.